proposed, it's only proposed, so 18 have proposed to continue to have a Rolls-Royce provision of library service, and the other 24 communities are really a self-help, voluntary provision with backup from the uh, officers there. And really, it's the 18. If they decided to have 20, and, and, and I've got all the, all the stats of all the libraries, as you probably have on the, from the internet and that, if they decided to say we'll have 20, and we'll have uh, 22 to look at again, number 19 and 20, without any doubt, would be Scolby and these alone. And then those 20 stand out in users, service and all that from all the others. <coughs> uh, the 2.3 million pounds saving over four years, yes, it is a, a big a big, uh, big ask and it's everyone's got to take cutbacks. If you've only got 100 pounds, and you, if you've only got 50 pounds, you want to spend 100, well, you can't, you've got to adjust. But, you know, it's a big 1.1 uh, in the first year, but over the next three years, if I've got it right, a 1.2 million over three years, it's only 400. I say only to save it. It's not massive savings over four years, but it's, it's end on end, isn't it? Uh, so the, the current opening hours, I've, been, I've looked at the current opening hours of all the 42 libraries. They are open in total for 1,350 hours per week, 68,000 hours per year, if you want. Useful information, you may say. It's the equivalent of 170 eight hour days. But I know there's a lot more work in those libraries than that. But what the important thing is for me is. Of those, of those days, 40 days, they are, some of them are open 9 hours per day, 9.5 hours per day, 10 hours per day, until 9.30 at night. One of them is 3, three days, they're open for 10 hours. Uh, you know, there must be a lot of overtime involved in, in there and, 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 and expense. Four of the libraries are open on Sundays. I can understand Harrogate and Scarborough, the two of them are open for 4 hours. They have a massive, massive... Uh, usage. <clears throat> Selby is the other one, and Pickering is the other one. Pickering up for three hours. Pickering is not, it, it's larger uses than is. Why should the residents of Pickering have the pleasure and privilege of going to the library on a Sunday for three hours, if they're so in that time, and the residents of Eastwall and Thursk and, and Hemsley and wherever else uh, don't. It's closed. Uh, you, you know, and and it might be historic, of course. Knaresborough, North Ollerton River, have far greater usage than what uh, Knaresborough, uh, Pickering had. We need a review, is needed, of the whole structure of the libraries and to, you know, to make some adjustments. There's one, there's two libraries in Rydale, six miles apart, very similar stats. One is open eight hours per week, more than the other. <clears throat> the proposed full service, you know, how they've arrived, as I see it, from to, uh, to say 18, I know the highest usage, and if, if there's 45,000 people in Harrogate, and there's 4,500 in these all, one tenth, everyone in these all, in my opinion, has the right to have the same facilities provided uh, as they have in, in Harrogate. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been, the common denominator has been physical visits. Now, had they used the percentage of population, the East Wall would have been well in that 18. I think it was 14, if everybody wants to tell me. Uh, so, my suggestion for the old two libraries is, Equal, equal room. Reduce if you've got to reduce the hours of every library by ten or percent or fifteen percent, so be it. If you've got to need to achieve these savings, if you've got to need volunteers in every library, uh, volunteers of twenty-five percent staffing or forty percent staffing, whatever, so be it. Every everyone would be fair and equal and would react to that. I was up to meet at Stone Cross this morning, and one councillor from North Allerton and two from Stokes were there. <clears throat> and whilst I wasn't asking the questions, and I said, we're having this meeting tonight, they said, what we would like, and they are proposed to be retained and will be retained, what we would like to see is equal. Everyone take a cut, everyone take a reduction. And, that, and you know, people are people are fair. And I'm not there with the officer, for they're doing a, a good job. Mr. Lord, Mr. Lord, just a question before I finish. Um, will you ask? to uh, activate a fairer system and look into it, I'm, I'm sure you are doing, and by doing that, it would be welcomed by all the people, but it would be more, more, more importantly, it would be welcomed by your chief executive, and because he wants a fairer system. And the other thing is, and you won't like me, you won't like me saying this, uh, it's how much is the cost of the library, of the mobile library provision? I think I know the answer, and, and I don't, 
You won't like it. I don't think it can be retained, personally, but I want, I'd like to know how much the cost, or what the savings would be. And to Council of Patmore and Surrey, uh, they have said they will take it on board. They will uh, uh, do what they can for us. But when it comes to the decision making, the officers will discuss the matter with the executive committee. And Caroline Patmore and Caroline that is on that. Caroline Les was here before, but we used Gareth Dad, what is it? <laughs> Gareth Dad and uh, Carl Les. They're the people who will actually have the discussions with the officers and they will, whatever they decide there, it will go to full council. Once, it, once they have decided, it's past the point of no return, because it will just get ratified. You'll say no, but it will get ratified. I've, I've, I've explained this all this many times. So, as well as you're writing to the, Mr. Law and his department, you should also copy in a letter to Councillor Sowery and Councillor Patmore, because, you know, they are the only two people who are in the decision-making process for this whole area, no one else. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'll ask for an answer on that later. I'm anxious to get back to questions from the floor. And yes, there's a gentleman at the front there, and then the one that's uh, the lady. That's, uh, that one behind you, Ian. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Robert Porter. I just uh, saw in the press this evening a letter saying if, in fact, a £10 precept was asked from each household in North Yorkshire, it would bring in one million pounds. Now, have the directors thought about that? Is it, it seems to me a very sensible uh, suggestion, especially as I'm sure all the other communities will feel like we do. Uh, we all want to save our own libraries. Okay. Councillor Dad will answer that, but you may be interested, as I have already asked the question, how much would it take of extra precept in Easingwold and the surrounding villages to plug the gap for Easingwold Library? So that question is already on the table and we're hoping to get an answer for our next town council. Gareth? Yes, thank you, Brian. You're in many ways in an enviable position because a, a town at the moment, a town or a parish council, can preset for these things. Unfortunately, a county council or district council can't because of a regime called capping. So it's, it's not an option for us, I'm afraid. Could I, could I just, I asked the question, how much will the mobile library provision save if it is, if it is abandoned? Yes. Um, the, uh, to be precise, the uh, mobile library service costs us half a million pounds a year. Um, it's um, ten, 10 mobiles at 50k, 50,000 pounds each. Thank you. Right up, right up there we are. Um, right, I'm, my name's Holly Hudson. I happen to be an NYCC employee, and believe me, I'm not paid over £100,000. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am an optimist, and I think you need to be very careful when we're looking for cuts and budgets, and we all know that there needs to be cuts. And if we did something personally, we would think this is a temporary five year maybe, you've all got, you know, we believe in the government's going to get us out of this crisis, it's caused by the bankers, we can get over it. If you if you get rid of something permanently, how are you going to bring it back in five years to come? It really is. It, you're never going to get them back. And I think um, whether you take 10% off everything or whatever you do, get a few volunteers in every library. But please, you know, any library you close will never get open. And believe that. And yeah, it's not yeah. fair. Why should I stay open when somebody else, you know, every argument in the hall that we had tonight applies to most, I would say, every library. And I don't want easing or because we know how to, you know, get money and we can speak eloquently to actually win. It's not a battle, it's not winners and losers. We want everybody to be fairly treated. We want our <laughs> We want this to be a temporary thing. Uh, 
an impassioned statement. Okay. Guy Chodier and I come from Craig. I was digging for some answers to some questions, and North Yorkshire eventually sent me an email which said, however, in the final analysis, what swung it for Thirsk and Saudi was the fact that their population is twice the size of East Island, and therefore, from the point of view of long-term planning for the service, this had to be taken into consideration. And we've already heard tonight, that is totally flawed. How much else of your calculations and the planning for these proposals is equally flawed? And how much more attention do you give to make sure that anything in the future is A, transparent, so that everybody can see how you've come to the agreements that you're going to make? Okay, I mean, I think, I think as, as Julie said in her presentation, I mean, we have to start somewhere. Um, but do you want to give a bit more? Yeah, when we looked at the population estimates, we took them from, um, I think it was 2001, the census stuff that we were given. And at the time um, that that was put down, I know we don't have you know more up-to-date information, but basically, in terms of thirst and the population, at that time it was 9,800 and easing bold. And this is just the immediate wards, so this was Thirsk and Salby. Easingwold came out at 4,460. So, no, no. But equally, Thirsk also serves a wider hinterland. Now, I accept what you're saying is that we could look again at that. And as Derek has said, we have not ruled out the option of looking at, you know, those statistics and, and the, the fact that Easingwold and Thirsk are very, very close. And, and you're right, whoever did, whoever did speak to you, you know, did say the right, that, that what had swung it was just really the population. Essentially, in terms of the way that the libraries are both used, you know, in terms of Thirsk, in some areas it has higher um, activity and in other areas you know, less so. They are very close, and we do accept that. So we're not we're not arguing with that. But in terms of what eventually we, we determined on was the population statistics from that activity data. Thank you. I think we probably have time for about two more questions, and <laughs> there are quite a few will be trying to get in. Uh, Jenny, you. I'd just like to say a word in praise of can librarians. You, can, can you oh, sorry, Jenny Clare. I'd like to say a word in praise of librarians. I appreciate, and I'm sure most people in this room appreciate, the time it takes to become a librarian. And we really do appreciate them. My question is, if we as volunteers join in with help in the libraries, how many librarians are going to lose their jobs? Yes. And as you might expect, one of the things that we have been doing is looking very closely at currently what our current workforce looks like. Um, those people who have been hoping to get a full, fully paid up job in the library service um, that isn't on a temporary contract have been disappointed probably for the last 18 months because, to be fair, we have actually seen um, the requirement coming in a sense and have felt that it would have been negligent of us, to be honest, to be taking people on on permanent contracts and all the rest of it, knowing what we, what we knew was potentially coming along down the track. So we do have, you know, potential and, and given um, the fact that there's perhaps going to be some time for us to work through these community solutions now. We can start looking more closely at where we might find savings in the staffing that aren't going to cause out and out you know, redundancies. And as a county council and as an employer, that would be the first, first thing that we would look at. And also, other things that we would look at would be redeployment opportunities for staff. But it has to be said, and, and you know, I would be being dishonest with you if I didn't say that staffing is one of our biggest costs alongside the building costs. Those, those, in a sense, are costs that we can, to some extent, have control over. Um, and, you know, we, are, we will have to look at ways in which 
we can use volunteers, not necessarily to completely replace librarians. And I, you know, speaking as, a, as somebody who went